welcome to a new episode of Outside the Panels with your host, Johnny the Machine Hughes. Welcome everyone to an episode of Outside the Panels. I'm your host, Johnny the Machine Hughes, and joining me this time around, it's not even Christmas yet, and we're talking about the new year. How crazy is that? I have got a pair of creators with a new book out for the new year, which is serious and funny. Did I mention it was funny and serious? Who else could I be talking to? But the ultra-talented Eric Nguyen and Scott Berman. How's it going, guys? Good. How are you? Going good. Going good. good. That was fun. <laughs> I hope I got the surname right. As I said, I am terrible with surnames. So thank no, you good. Yes, cool, excellent. All right, so you guys have got a, a really cool book coming out. Uh, it's out January eighteenth. Uh, it's called White Savior. The title is somewhat tongue in cheek, shall we say? Who who came up with the idea, and can you let us know what the the basic premise of the story is? Who would like to go first? You know. White Savior, I don't know if the white guy should be going first. Uh, let's, 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 let's let the white guy go first. Uh, I, I don't know about that. I am so, I am in general a, a kind of talkative, charactery person, you can tell by looking at me. And Eric is a lot more subdued. Right. And uh, I always go, Eric, we got to have me subdued when we're talking about it. We got to get you <laughs> in the, the charactery. All uh, right. Thing. Okay, challenge, challenge accepted. All right, here we go. Eric, tell us, how did you come up with this great idea? Yeah, well, uh, you know, uh, it started about seven years ago. Uh, I got this email from uh, from a guy named Scott Berman. And, uh, sounds sounds like me, a class guy. Yeah, like Scott he's Berman. trying to get me to do some free work. And I was like, no, man, I'm <laughs> busy. You know, uh, at the time, I think I was working on uh, Starboy um, for, for Marvel. That's the, uh, weekend, the weekend, the weekend books. Yeah. Okay. And honestly, I didn't have uh, that much free time, but, uh, you know, uh, Scott kept emailing me uh, uh, stuff and uh, and e emailing me some other scripts and other stories. And uh, and every now and then I'll, I'd read some stuff. And, man, he was just funny. And so um, when I finished up uh, Starboy and I was trying to figure out what I was going to do next, I had some free time. So I was like, yeah, gave Scott a call, which is he was kind of surprised because uh, – you know, I was the only one who called him back, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I sent a lot of emails, and Eric responded. Uh, his cast, your, were, cast your net wide. Yeah, <laughs> his scripts was very funny. I mean, I've been working in this industry for so long and uh, and doing all these uh, serious books and dark books. And, and a lot of times, they don't have comedy in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, and when, from what I was reading from other scripts and other ideas that um, Scott was throwing at me, it was like, this is funny stuff. I mean, his scripting is so funny. So we were, we just bounce out ideas, what I wanted to do. And I wanted to get away from the dark noir, um, uh, you know, serious. Like, I, I think I uh, I spent a couple of years doing Ex Vigilante from Dark Horse. And that was, um, you know, a very cool book, but it's, it's a very dark. It's like a Batman slash punisher book you know everyone's getting yeah. killed and so um so I, I just want to do something fun and uh and like i said uh the 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 title itself by savior is tongue-in-cheek and and it's a comedy yeah. you know and so so yeah, uh, it's funny eric talks about not doing something violent but our book has become very violent but in a funny <laughs> way in a funny way and, yeah. Um, yeah yeah and we I'll, were the way we thought of the book, it's, it's kind of interesting. It was when, um, so I was talking to Eric and I was just bouncing ideas. I throw 15 ideas at him and see, see, see what he likes. Um, and, uh, and it was around the time that movie, the, the great wall with, with Matt Damon came out. All right. And, uh, I remember like, uh, I think it was um, uh, Constance Wu was talking mm -hmm. about how people didn't, they didn't need um, white saviors to save them. You know, they can save mm -hmm. themselves. And so I think me and Eric were just bouncing around ideas and we're like, wouldn't it be funny if the white guy was an idiot? And yeah. uh, it just, the, the, the thing just kind of clicked uh, yeah. for us right there. The story kind of uh, wrote itself. Uh, and so, yeah, we just had a, a fun time doing it. And, and uh, I mean, me and Eric just working together. It's just straight up fun. Like I'm just, we're making each other laugh like the whole time saying crazy things and, and 
throwing our ideas out there. It's good because I've I've looked I've I've read the first issue. You kind of said that along, and <clears throat> when I read the the sort of like the preamble, the kind of what it was about, I'm kind of thinking to myself, what? You know, <laughs> I'm like, this is this is this isn't going to work. You know, it's like audience have been audiences have been built up to expect a certain something, um, rightly or wrongly, and two two panels in, I was like, the dude's an idiot. And <laughs> like, I just clicked. I was like, right, I know where I'm at now. And there is a serious message behind it, but how it's done is the interesting bit. It's the fun bit. You can't help but like the characters involved. So I've got to ask the characters. Um, you're both down as writer, which is interesting. And then Eric, you're credited as, as penciler. So Scott, I'll come to you with this one. The, when it comes to writing together, how collaborative is that? Because, you know, there's a lot of, I suppose, there's a lot of industry talk about who did what. Did Stan do this or did Jack do this? Did Steve do this or did Jack, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so when you see two two guys created, shown as the writer, you're like, right. Who told the straight line and who told the punchline? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that, that's a good, good question. Um, and, you know, it's funny you mentioned the Marvel method. So we uh we kind of we we wrote like the basic outline together mm -hmm. and um we wrote the outline together said this is where we want the story to go this is what we want the story to say eric um eric would draw it and it actually made the story funnier when eric, when eric would would draw it and mm -hmm. so we would sit down and we would like write out um the script together i would throw out this is a, a good way of um describing our relationship I'd throw out seven different jokes for a, for a page. And Eric would be like, you're a psychopath. Just write one. <laughs> you know, like, Please, I don't need to go through all of this. And so Eric would basically give me his ideas uh -huh. and I would give him, and I would come back with a bunch of jokes and we'd kind of polish them off together. Uh -huh. And uh, so, yeah, that was kind of the, the process there. It was just, it was a lot of back and forth and just joking around. Uh, the uh -huh. one funny thing I always note is that the one difference I think between me and Eric is actually I'm a lot more scared than Eric is. So like every joke, I'm like, wait, 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 is that right? Can, can we say that? Can we do yeah. that? And Eric would be like, it's fine. And, and there were points when I would, I would write jokes that I thought this is way too far. Mm -hmm. And I would give them to Eric. He'd be like, Oh, that's funny. And I'm like, no, that, that's not funny. We can't do that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's been, it was just a, a fun yeah. process there. I, I don't know what it is. It, maybe it's just me because I'm I yeah, I'm old school too. I, I love just non political correct jokes. I mean, yeah. it, it, we're, we're, it's, it's comics. We're supposed to have fun with this stuff, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and so when when he throws out some 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 of this stuff, I was just like, I'll, I'll make it work. We'll make it work, you know. Yeah. We'll make it so silly and so goofy that uh, it looks good, but yet you know it's it's a satire. It's yeah, it's yeah. Funny. So this is what I was just about to say, because when you, I remember, I, this is about comic books, but I, I remember a quote from Harrison Ford talking about Star Wars and some of the dialogue that Han Solo has to say, right? And the, the, uh, the I, I don't know if it's true or not, but the, the quote I'm thinking of is Harrison Ford turns to George Lucas after reading one of the scripts and goes, George, you can write this shit, but you sure can't say it. <laughs> and I think... That's exactly how you kind of get humor. Scott, you write it and you think, oh my God, that looks like so serious. There's no way I can get away with this. Then Eric comes in with his pencils and then adds a little bit of slapstick to it, yep. a little bit of situation, a little bit of context. And that takes away the burr a little bit, but still leaves the humor. Would that be yep. a great kind of way of looking yep, at yep. it? Yeah, well, that's, that's like perfect. We we do some things in the in the, in the upcoming issues that you initially when he when when the idea came out I was like I was like yeah we'll we'll make this work I mean yeah. there, there's some we don't want to spoil no spoilers we want people to buy the book <laughs> yeah. but it, no it's spoilers. so it, it's it's one of those times where like you know he'll you throw it out then I think I think we can make this work I mean mm. it, it's ridiculous you know but uh, but it works you know. And and what one interesting thing for for me I guess that that helped the book in 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 my uh, opinion is, um, is that I didn't realize we I kind of always envisioned it as like a graphic novel, 
And mm -hmm. I didn't kind of think of it as four issues. And so the book gets a little crazier with issue two, three, and four. And so because of that, I was like, we got to figure out how to make the first issue, just even with the words, more weird and crazy mm. and funny and zany. And so I think it actually just helped uh, immensely uh, the fact that I didn't like think about that beforehand. Mm. Uh, I think it helped the, the book in general. Uh, the first makes issue. More, makes it more organic, right? You're not set to a set format. Yeah. You're kind of like, right, this is my story I'm going to tell. If it, and then you you got your start, middle, and end, and all the set pieces in between. If it takes four, it takes four. If it takes six, it takes six. Yeah, and you got it. Six. Yep. Yeah, cool. All right, we're going to get into the book in a little while. Um, let's just share some art. Whoa. Now that, that is not a super soldier. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that's not one of those hats, you know, the, with the arrows around the back. The Steve Martin. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the jerk thing. So this is, this is the white savior. Um, or is it? Or is it? <laughs> That's the question. That's the question. Why? How was? I get the satire, you know, because the book is aimed at that kind of um, whitewashing element that c occurs in a lot of different media. Um, but the satire element, the humor element, time travel. Why do you throw time travel into the mix? Who whose idea was that? Was that just kind of one of the one of the key plot points? You know, <laughs> I did. I never, I never thought why we have time travel. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, it's like you played some sort of crazy version of, you know, some bog. I tell you what, let's just put some words together and see what happens. <laughs> Eric, you got any idea? Um, no, time travel was actually, uh, in, you know, time travel because initially it starts from this great story that his uh, grandfather has been telling yeah. him through ages. So, so that was necessary, yeah. you know, to get him back there somehow. Okay. And you're just cool. just thinking about it now. It's I think, I think time travel makes it so that the main character, um, uh, Todd, uh, he can basically say to everybody, "Hey, this guy's clearly not the white savior," and the audience yeah. can also understand, "Okay, this guy's clearly an idiot. He's clearly wrong. He's yeah. clearly going to get everybody killed." So I think it's a really good tool for basically. Um, us to say hey this guy is an yeah. idiot and here's proof we have the proof this guy's from the future he's letting yeah. everyone know but, um, the, problem, but the, the problem still was that um the story comes down that the <laughs> white savior is the white savior so yeah, yeah. You know. it's, it's, it's that legend just you, know, you know <laughs> yeah it's cool it's cool so we, we, I've, I've mentioned i've mentioned the word it's out there we, we, you know we're not gonna it's not the elephant in the room anymore uh the whitewashing is a huge huge issue for a lot of people um across uh different characters different media why do you feel that um and i get eric we'll start with yourself on this yeah. one why why is it important that we we recognize that and we do something about that even with a fun book rather than like taking a high like a super high moral stand i suppose uh, well you know um honestly for me i, I just thought it was funny to do because everyone's talking about <laughs> white savior. Everyone's talking about this whole uh, whiteness and this stuff. I, I, I'm Asian, so I, I don't really actually focus on that, to be honest. I, I just thought, we'll just do something fun about it. And okay. so I was when, when when we were coming up with ideas, I was like, well, we can have that sort of character back there. But actually, Todd is the one who, 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 who you know, who, who's trying to figure this out what what, what happened mm -hmm. yeah and, and, and yeah, so that's and, what, you know, yeah. I'll, I'll add to that one, one time i was i was talking to eric and i'm like um and eric was telling me that he's asian but more importantly he goes i'm just a i'm just a guy you yeah. know and so like the fact that we always say the fact that um that todd is asian is both obviously it's important <laughs> but it's also not important because he's just the everyman He's, yeah. he's all of us. And so, um, yeah, and so it's about, you know, uh, uh, giving these characters a chance. It's really weird because me and Eric, we're not that people, we feel like might have a misconception that Eric and I are very political people. 
um, we're kind of right in the middle on, on everything. And mm -hmm. uh, for us, it's all about kind of the story. We want to represent, um, obviously, um, people who haven't been represented in the past. And we want to do it in a, in a fun and entertaining way. And I think a lot of times people might do the opposite. They, they put yeah. um, the cause way before the story. And right, okay, that's a show. Those are kind of just as important. We wanna yeah. we want people who would typically be like, oh, white savior, oh, they're they're all like this. We want them yeah. to just have a good time reading yeah. this. And I think that they will. So this Thanks. story is not like we always say it's not left, it's not right. Uh it's, it's just, just fun. one for everybody yeah. fun. while addressing this this issue, yeah. of course, as well. Yeah, I mean when 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 Scott's talking about this, I mean with with Todd, I, I mean I, I relate to Todd, obviously, you know. I mean in, in the book we're, we're right what you know, that's what it says, yeah. isn't it? Right what you know. We're eating burgers and stuff. And and yeah. I mean I mean that's <laughs> I mean for me it was like, you know, it's uh uh all these all these cliches about, you know, um color and all that stuff I mean, no karate and all that yeah stuff. exactly the, the start like, the, the book, i don't know yeah. karate you know I, I don't do math and all that stuff yeah yeah the, this the stereotypes that come with yeah exactly sorry i don't drink tea and i hate harry potter so what sort of <laughs> what sort of british bloke am i right i fit right in yeah <laughs> cool so we'll have a look at some of the art we've got going on there we go eric Talk to me about how you kind of sort of move from script to art. I suppose for yourself being part of the writing team, it makes it you get kind of like a, a one up man. You're like, oh, I kind of know well, I kind of see what I see already. You know, you it's know, not like uh, handing this... off to a writer, sorry, an artist externally and then having to explain the image again, right? Yeah, well, you know, it's, uh, I mean, this is actually a harder project than what I've done before. Because, like you said, being part of the uh, the writing part, the you know the plot and all that stuff, um, you do have certain images that stuck in your head mm -hmm. uh, of what a certain end scene or this scene or that scene looks, and you're just trying to get in between it sometimes too, figure out what what happens to make mm -hmm. that happen. And uh, and I went through so many different styles, so many different kind of uh, rendering styles of what what would work. And the and the great thing about this one, this was actually one of the um, the first raw sketches and it turned mm -hmm. out to work at as a prelude uh part of at the very beginning because it's very um kind of sketchy and raw to it but as you flip through the book it gets more refined it gets more to what i tend to do as an artist and uh, but it but the first few pages actually for me when scott saw some of these doodles he's like this is perfect for that part mm -hmm. and so sometimes it just works out but sometimes it can be laborious too Mm. I think on this page we get the first sense of the, the humor of the book, don't we? Yeah. Um, yeah. So that sounds like it's like -da, like the grand opening, the star destroyer coming over the planet. Yeah, yeah that's really of funny. If you only show um, the first page, the page that was you just had it on, as my yeah. um, as the gardeners are um, uh, doing their stuff. If you only show this page, it's a completely different book than our book uh so mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's just kind of funny we all uh uh you know uh, this is the setup to the joke and the next yeah. page is letting everyone know it's a punchline yeah. essentially yeah. it's this overconfident uh, white guy uh who thinks i'm gonna go in i'm gonna save everybody and of course yeah. it just takes a second for him to get pelted with arrows and uh uh right through the head there so <laughs> just kind of funny uh it sets up the book kind of I think very well in the, in the first couple of pages. Absolutely, totally agree. That that levity of of tone, it's 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 interesting because you've got you've got the the monologue <clears throat> telling you how serious the white savior is and what he's done for the clan, but then you've got the clan's reaction to what's going on, and the two are absolutely diametrically opposed to each other. You know, yeah. one's like, "Yeah, he's a hero." The other one's like, "Dude, he's a zero." It's, <laughs> it's like. It, and then that kind of carries all the way through. You can see it a little bit in the relationship between Todd and his grandfather, you know, because yeah. Todd's, Todd's the guy living his life and the grandfather's the one who's like preaching the, the, the homily or the, the history of, of, of uh, the white savior. Yeah. <laughs> cool. I will say, I've got to be honest, 
I'm British, so there should be a U in there. I'm sorry, I can't, I can't. It, 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 <laughs> Americans drop a U there. It should be all save our if all you. Oh, you're 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 going yeah. with the, the English yeah. version. Yeah, because I'm English. What did I say? Like, I look like I I'm like even, I didn't even notice that. Yeah. Well, I don't think there are any elevators, so you don't have to worry about us yeah. calling them lips. So we'll should see. be we'll see. okay in that part. I blame my I blame my wife. My wife, she's um she's she's like got an eye for spelling and stuff, right? So we go into a local comic book shop, not a comic book shop, a local coffee shop. Right, and she not costas or anything like that. Just like a little independent place, and she looks up at the menu, and then she storms out. And I go, "What's going on? Why? Where are you going? We haven't sat down." She goes, "They've spelled cappuccino wrong. <laughs> if you can't spell it, you can't make it." And off she goes. I'm like, I wouldn't even care. She drinks lattes, but you know, what can I say? Um, so yeah, thanks to her, I get to see. I see things like this. Like, what? What's that about? All right, we're going to take a quick break with our other shows. Um, what have I got that would work? All right, well, Eric, you've worked at uh, Marvel before, correct? Yep, Marvel, DC, got a couple other um, stuff from Image and Dark Horse, and uh, I haven't done any creator own for a while, so it, this was a great time to get back into doing a creator own book. Cool, and Scott? I once... Ate a sandwich out of a garbage can. That's cool. a big. Uh, that's right, the big right. to do for me. Um, so, so if we're talking garbage can, it's this <laughs> advert about Marvel. Here we go. <laughs> So, No Price Podcast, the UCPN show for all your Marvel, MCU, Disney Plus news drops every alternate Tuesday. There you go. Cool. Um, Eric, you were mentioning about how your art style changed. I'm not going too far into the book because I want people to actually go and buy the book. Yeah. Right? But just as a kind of a point to prove, this is the page directly after the historical elements. And this is... You could argue this is your more traditional comic book layout. Yeah. Um, I love the colors. Who was the colorist on this? Uh, we had a colorist that uh, that I uh, did. I find him, or did you find him, Scott? I I, I, I found him, and you approved him. So oh, okay, that's I found like a tag team. And I sent him to Eric, <laughs> and then uh, you said, "Let's go with this one." He, his name was um, uh, I want um. Trioko. So I got used to say it because I'm terrible with names. So well, what's, what's <laughs> really funny about it is his when we when we sent him his name on like Facebook. I found him on Facebook. His name on oh. Facebook is different from his his name. His, 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 he said, "This is what I want. You, this is my other name that I want you to use for the comic." And mm -hmm. so I I realized that I'm so used to calling him his Facebook name. But I'm like, wait, what was his comic name? And I think Eric was thinking the same thing. Uh, <laughs> Will the real colorist please stand up? <laughs> right. Yeah. I love I love the color effects. I was oh, on thanks. a pod that not so long ago, and I, I said the last. I suppose the biggest change in comics over the last twenty years has been coloring. Easy. Yeah. 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 Cool. It lends itself uh, to different, different seriousness and and hmm. you know like again we wanted it to be light this this book to be kind of comedy so make sure that we we use some sort of instead of staying away we stayed away from a lot of very dark and yeah more playful colors more uh, saturated colors definitely it's kind of has that sitcom feel yeah you know, I never thought about it but yeah yeah definitely yeah especially these bits with the interaction between the two. The juxtaposition elements you know that we were talking about earlier so no i like that cool excellent um when it comes to create your own stuff dark horse are up there with a range of other um publishers what was it about dark horse that, that made you think you know what these are the guys for us uh, what, uh <laughs> we'll go with eric first and then yeah well yeah, yeah well um well the thing with dark horse is I have such a great working relationship with Dark Horse from oof, maybe eight, ten years ago, right. and uh, and uh, I know the editor very well, and um, 
and we sent it to them and they loved it. Mm -hmm. um, and it just, it just seemed to be, make sense because I have such a strong working relationship with them. And mm -hmm. it doesn't, it doesn't hurt that they've been doing fantastic work with taking property to Netflix. Um, is that the goal then? Is that the big? Is, is that the big I, goal? I don't know if that's the the goal. The, the goal. Hey, that's, that's my goal. <laughs> that's my goal. You know. Well, I think the goal is is the, so what I'm I'm still learning about it myself. But the business is very saturated right now. The comic book business, and so if we get a a movie at Netflix, mm -hmm. everybody's going to read the comic book, and the comic book will get the publicity that it might not get if it doesn't have something like that. Uh, I think mm. that's our biggest concern right now is okay. people not knowing about the the book as much because, um, you know, my, my name will, will get you 10 cents in a sandwich. Eric's name will get people excited, but uh -huh. he's not as, as household as he should be. And I always say the reason Eric is not as household as he should be is because he doesn't have a flavor flave working for him like me. I will talk Eric up <laughs> to everybody. One hundred percent synonymous with comic books. I, I just want to draw. That's that's well, what see, so well. See that see this is what yeah, this is what I'm getting at. Um I kinda Netflix and the I suppose the MCU and how comics have been have, I'm gonna say it's evolved. I'm I'm old school, look at me, I'm old school. For me, it's <laughs> comics first everything else after the event right that's that's my i'll tell, set my stall out now that's where i am yeah. all right um i get what people say when they say oh it'd be great to get because you know the netflix show will, will create readership for the comics and so on and so forth i don't hear anybody talk about the men in black comic book i don't <laughs> hear anybody talk about road to, road to perdition that's or time true. cop or the mask <laughs> and all these all these comic book movies came out way before captain america's flung his mighty shield you know so i kind of think you know i have an ambition is great absolutely great because you know i've looked i've read the book i've been looking up for you guys sent me that and i think it's top notch i think it's, well, thank i you. laughed thank all you. the way through it you know it just I, I had a stupid grin on my face from point one all the way to, through you know and i don't know I don't know if you lose something, you know, if you go TV or movie, I don't think, I think you lose something because it's another element. It's not just you guys on the, yeah, you know, of course. You've, you've got, you've got the acting. Every, you've got to get it. every yeah. adaptation is, is a crapshoot. You have no idea. Yeah. Um, I think, I think, you know, like, uh, I just am sweating 24 hours a day <laughs> worried that if the comic doesn't take off, and you Google Scott Berman White Savior and have no idea what it means. I'm a little nervous that uh, that, yeah. that my name will be synonymous with that. And so my goal is for enough people to know about it, where I yeah. can explain what it is without having to explain what it is. <laughs> if you are if you are Googling Scott Berman's name with White Savior, please put your safe search on Google first. <laughs> yes, <laughs> without a doubt. <laughs> Excellent. Right. So, um, let's talk about let's talk about influences. Okay, um, Eric, artistic influences for yourself. Oh, I, saw the, I think I saw a bit of Mike Magnolia in. Your, oh man, in the... I, there's so many different. I mean, I've been working in this industry for 15 plus years. I mean, 2005 is when I started um, uh, Strange oh, Girl geez. with yeah with Rick Remender and uh, oh boy, I mean my style has changed. 360 degrees back and forth and i i, I get i'm i'm i i love comics and 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 sometimes you get influenced by what you're reading or what you're looking at or and so that i've gone through so many different stages and mike nola is awesome frank miller uh i mean it's it just these days i mean then the coloring started right because before when i started comics it was still you know uh the Digital coloring hasn't really caught on that much, but then once that exploded, you have so many different options now that a lot of times it's it's a good and it's a bad thing because I mm. continuously change, mm. and sometimes when I do that, it takes me longer. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm experimenting too much sometimes. I'm not you know? Andreas. 
Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. I tell <laughs> tell tell my wife about that, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm spending too much. No one no one's gonna care. No, but I care, you know. And no, so. yeah. A <laughs> quick quick story. I doodle, I doodle for fun. I'm I, you know, I I just I genuinely when I say I doodle for fun, that's exactly what it is. But I drew my wife a Wonder Woman picture a few years back. And I saw an interview with Jim Lee who says he takes a photocopy. So he, so I, drew, I sketched it out. Yeah, that's great. Photocopy this. So I could play with the inks and the colours and all that. By the yeah. time I'd finished, I had like 46 different versions of the same picture. It took me about two weeks to do this one thing, right? Gave it to her as a Christmas present and she loves it and it's great to up on the wall. Nobody get, nobody sees the other 40, uh, 45. They yeah. got shredded, right? Yeah. All yeah. that time just all yeah. the way through. Um, Scott, what about yourself? What, what, what influences do you have? Kicking you know, I, I have so, so many. It's, it's hard to, to uh, make them, it's hard to name them all. You know, I, I know like some of my favorite current ones. Um, one of my favorites is Mark Russell. And I, I Facebook friend requested him years ago because, you know, I'm a oh. weirdo who does things like that. And I, I sent him the, the book to look at. And so like for me, just having him look at the book was, was such yeah. an honor uh like this uh, is the vamp this is the red sun you right there um Marcus i'm sorry he's on red he's on red sun no, mark uh mark russell he he did um he's done um billionaire island he did the flintstones yes. yeah. and and um oh yeah red, yeah, and, red yeah, yeah. um uh and so uh, you you said sorry you you're no sorry you? so you're in, uh, um, oh, no, no, uh, you you said somebody else's name red, and I, red sonia he's, he's, i think he was on red sonia for a while I, I i think i know the guy you're talking about his name is is, is hitting my my thing that i'll google well, it later let me but um <laughs> yeah that's one like brian bendis is obviously the, the the god among men uh stan lee of course how can you not mention stan lee and and i actually once and this was before the marvel movies came out i was walking down the street i turn around it's stan lee and i'm like stan lee and the first thing he goes, he goes, he says, which I thought always was weird, was, how did you know who I am? And I'm like, yeah. dude, you're Stan Lee. Uh, yeah. And so it was like before the Marvel movies, I, I was always floored that, like, he's like, how did you know who I am? And I, I walked with him for, like, 20 minutes in the opposite direction of my car. I, I was just like, <laughs> and we had a 20-minute conversation, and it was just like, uh, you know, they say never meet your idols, but, like, yeah. Stan Lee is literally the epitome of what you think Stan Lee um, is going to be. And so, yeah, that was just, that was awesome. Yeah, Mark, we're both right. Mark Russell is the is the guy, your guy, billionaires. Who's I mean, your so, guy? I, I know he's, he's guy, also but... my guy. He's also my guy. He did Red Sonja as well. Oh, um, he did, so, I didn't realize he did Red Sonja. Oh. Yeah. Um, I, I told the Stan Lee story today at work. I was, there was, at my day job, the guy was, I was talking to this kid and he was saying like, how much he, how much he's like, he likes floppy, he likes floppy comics rather than digital yeah. and i'm like i'm old school i like floppies i don't i don't do digital unless i have to review books and i said it reminds me of what stan lee said about digital comic books and the kid was like what do you say i said well apparently because you know i wasn't there stan lee said um digital comics and real comics i like looking at pictures of boobs but i like holding them more <laughs> yeah so, <laughs> so again i wasn't there so don't you know <laughs> Don't sue me or anything, but it sounds about right to me. It sounds about right. <laughs> um, so the independent market's absolutely massively taken off over the last, I'm going to say, five years, easy. I mean, yes, there's always been Image and Dark Horse and Dynamite and stuff, but the amount of creator-owned stuff that's getting a lot of press nowadays. I mean, Ahoy Comics is, is huge. AWA is huge. Vault Comics, um, you know, the Aftershock do a good job. What is it? And this is to both of you. Which is it? What is it that you think makes the um, independent market so so rich right now? Um, we'll go with Eric first, and then work yeah. to Scott. Is that all right? Because yeah. you said I had to, you had to promote Eric. So Always Eric, go Eric first. Eric I'll first. Is that the way it goes? <laughs> well, well, that question, I, I'm not really quite sure uh, about the independent market. I always. I like I said I, I started with the big two and I, it always seemed to me that the, we're competing against the big two always, yeah. and it, uh, I, and I'm glad I, I see a lot of people doing their own kickstarters, their own mm -hmm. uh, crowdfunding and being successful at that. Um, mm -hmm. But when it comes to I mean, like all my creator-owned books have been published either Image or Dark Horse, 
And so uh, I haven't really ventured out into any of the other ones because I'm so afraid of that. You know, uh, I, I mean, Dark Horse, I mean, sorry to interrupt, but Dark Horse, you could argue we're going through a bit of a flux right now because obviously they lost a couple of licenses to Marvel, you know, yeah. the whole oh, Star yeah, Wars yeah, yeah. thing and oh, yeah. Aliens and Predators have moved on as well. Yeah. So this is a trying time for Dark Horse, Yeah, you know. You could be the white savior of Dark Horse. I hope so. I mean, but I never going say that about myself. Maybe Eric could be. Yeah, I hope. So, uh, <laughs> but regardless, even, even though they they lost those things, they they made. I mean, they've got a book coming out with Bendis. They're 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 yeah. still crushing. Oh, it. I, was, I was just going yeah. for this. I was being facetious. I apologize. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, no, yeah. But, but but also the reason why I still I I think Dark Horse is amazing because of the expansion they've been able to do with. Mm streaming i mean they've so successful yeah. with with um taking property and putting on streaming hmm. I, I think you can never i always think when you pick up a dark horse book even without the if you didn't have the little label on the front you mm -hmm. picked up a dark horse book you could open it up and you'd be like oh this is a dark horse book because you can just oh. it just has that level of quality mm -hmm. across it and I know I might sound a bit glib when I talk about the properties, but you got to remember Dark Horse had concrete back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And they had all these like way out there books that yeah. they built on, and then the I suppose the 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 Italian books were probably the books that kind of got them like people interested, and then they move on from there onwards. You know, mm -hmm. when we talk about Star Wars, for example, they only did what three three new Star Wars series; the rest were reprints from new print newspaper uh, stories newspaper strips so dark horse are up there the fact that dark house dark horse have been around for so long have you, have you met mike richardson sorry have, have i met, met him? him no i wish i wish i wish i had yeah, I, I've, I had a meeting with him uh, uh in regards to um to white savior and all that i mean that's the first time i mean i've worked from forever but that was mm -hmm. the first time i had a meeting with him the dude but, loves comics I he, mean, yeah He's he awesome. needs a new amateur British writer. Hey, how are you doing? <laughs> and he, he 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 still he still has he still loves to write great yeah. new uh, new um, comics and but you can tell he just loves comics. He loves creators and yeah. he and he supports them. And so that's that's one thing that I mean it's it's amazing when you speak to someone of that stature. You know you think yeah. oh you know but he's so he's really down to earth and he he just loves old school loves comics and. Um, yeah. Started from a comic book shop, wasn't he? Back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, He's, yeah. He, yeah. He, I forget what he wrote long. He he started as a. I mean, he published his own book long time yeah. ago. Yeah. Cool, Scott. Same sort of question for yourself then. Dark um, horse. The, the question segued a bit. You I gotta remind me the question. I don't know. I wasn't listening. Do you think <laughs> I listen when I talk? I, I can't do two things at once. Really I don't cool. multitask. Oh, wait, where were we? Uh... <laughs> So working with that, the independent markets taking off. Oh, so so oh, so so that that's a that's an interesting um, question, and and because for me, I'm still learning all of this stuff. And so one of the things about all these independent books is there's a lot of them right now, and I think a lot of people they get into comics because they want to make a movie, and so a lot of people are getting into comics just because they want to make a movie, which means people who are comic people like me and Eric, we have a lot more competition. Yeah. And uh, because of that, the market sometimes gets a little oversaturated and comic book stores are a little overrun, not sure what to buy. They, they can't buy everything. True. And, and I know that uh, this actually is interesting what you were talking about earlier about how um, uh, digital versus, you know, paper. Of course, we want paper. Uh -huh. But that being said, in the independent markets, if the stores aren't ordering your books and you want the general public to read them, I'll tell my friends who that. aren't into comics at all. They're not into comics at all. Say, dude, you got to buy my book. Yeah. Okay, give me a link so I can buy it. <laughs> nope. You got to call your local comic book shop. Here's What's the, the shop? Thing <laughs> Here's the thing about telling that. I don't want to do that. I can't yeah. even get... So, so we have a Chinese restaurant that we go to all the time, me and my wife. Hey, 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 what, what? <laughs> we, we, have food, we, we, we have a food restaurant. We have a food restaurant. We have a food restaurant. But we have this uh, Chinese food restaurant that we go to all the time. And if we order it via Grubhub, it's like $15 more 
than if we call them and order it up. Yeah. My wife still orders through Grubhub because she doesn't want to make a phone call. And crazy. it's not saying anything crazy about my wife. It's just that's what people are like now, yeah. unfortunately. They yeah, won't exactly. call the stores. And so the we, question is, if our book doesn't get the publicity that we want it to, do we tell people, okay, here's a link to Comixology on Amazon. Buy it there, especially if they're an influencer reaching yeah. out to 300,000 people who are under the age of 25. Yeah. So it's a super tricky thing that we're trying to figure out. Um, do we want everybody to buy a paper copy? Of course, that's what comics are all about. Mm-hmm. But if we can't get them to, what do we do? And so that's uh, that's a tricky thing that we're, we're trying to figure out. Um, as you can see, we're, we're kind of we're kind of nervous about it, you know, well, no, no, you know, especially with with our title. We want we want, you know, the people to you know, get mm-hmm. excited about the, the representation and we want them to get excited about the story. Uh-huh. Um, and so we just, we just were worried about what might happen if it, if it doesn't. So, well, okay. We- so from, from my, from my point of view, being yeah. a comic book rev- reviewer, a comic book reader, someone who does these podcasts, I think you've probably gone with probably the best company Dark Horse's mini series format, the one and four and done, is yeah. fantastic because you get your product out there, you build your audience, you then gauge where you are for the next set of four. So mm-hmm. it's not like a continuous like slog against whatever events coming up from the big two. On top of that, because you've got because it's Dark Horse, Dark Horse are a recognised publisher, so comic book shops don't have to take such a huge punt on this because it's like, hey, it's a Dark Horse book. I, as a comic book owner, you'll know who are your Dark, dark Horse fans yeah, versus yeah. the ones who are yeah. DC fans or Marvel fans. So that's two, you're up two points already <laughs> straight away. The third thing is you're, you're actually putting some thought into this, which is great. Now, I like, I like floppies. Uh, the guy I was talking to today likes floppies. Some people like digital. Some people like trade paperbacks. Yeah, yeah. There is no competition between any of them as long as you can provide each that's yeah. the secret of success from my yeah. point of view because you, you've got to think i've got to produce comics for the comic fans i've got to produce digital for the digital fans and i've got to do a trade for the guys who want to wait four months to make sure the damn book finishes right yeah yeah and that's and that's your model you know you've got to it's not one versus the other it's the whole thing together Makes sense, yeah. That's how I, sense. I mean, that's how I look at it. Well, that's actually, like, you know, oh no, no, no! That definitely makes sense. I'm just constantly thinking strategically. What what can we do to ensure people see it? And it's uh, well, I might yeah. be able to help you with that. <laughs> well, thank you. I mean, uh, again, that's always the challenge is trying to get people to because um, you know, like Scott was saying, I you know, my family and and my non comic friends they don't step into stores. And the only reason why they know of Marvel and all that stuff is because of movies. Yeah, you know? my, wife, my wife's exactly the same. My wife is the same, and I, I wouldn't care. You know, my house is covered in comic book stuff. It's crazy. Like uh, you, 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 you asked it, well, um, Umbrella Academy, right? Well, yeah. That was a comic. What? And it's like it, it's crazy. Yeah. You know? It's like it's like all my non-comic book fan friends. They'll say to me, "Oh, you love the Umbrella? It used to be a comic." I'm like. <laughs> just to mean, just to like comics, doesn't mean I like every single one of them, you know. You know, that's, <laughs> and that's kind of how it goes, you know. It, this used to be a, I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah, like, dull, you know. And then when I get excited about stuff and I say, oh, it's about a comic, then they look down the nose, like, oh, it's a comic, oh. right? Exactly, exactly. I mean, yeah. we know it. We we live. I mean, we we love comics. And we yeah, go man. back way, but, and now it's like when people say, oh, it's, it used it was comic, yeah. Yeah, the boys, come on, you know, and yeah, what what is that? Everyone's like, oh, the the boys is such a great great riff off against Marvel superheroes. It's it's unbelievable. It's this. It's like, dude, it's like it's been out for years. Yeah, you know? it's like come on. It's like people talk about the Walking Dead, like it's still something new. Whew, boy, it's Walking like, Dead. Yeah, that dude, that dude, uh, Kirkman, he did it right. Yeah, Tony yeah, Moore and Kirkman. Time. Ooh, man, that great team. You could argue. You could argue that uh, Kirkman saved image. Yep. 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 I'm not getting into that debate. <laughs> All right. To follow Eric and Scott, there's an Instagram. 
there you go. It's right there at the bottom of the screen. It's dead easy to remember that one. So <laughs> you don't need to go pause on the screen for that. Um, as we said, the book is out January 18, 2023. Looking forward to it. Yeah, thank, you, thank you. Oh, uh, yeah. Can I go ahead and plug my Instagram, by the way? I thought you maybe. Yeah. 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 Yes. It's just Eric Nguyen Art. And that's my Instagram. All, all in one word. Yep. All in one word. Fire then. Let me help you out with that. Uh, it says typing and hoping you spell everything right because, you know, my typing socks. <laughs> can use that joke. It's one of my favorites. It's fine. Um, and we'll see you. Good. There you go. Thank there you very you much. Go. You're more than welcome. There you go. So if you check out the Instagrams for Eric and, of course, for White Saviour, you will see tons of uh, new material, hints, secrets, behind the scenes stuff. Shh, yeah, especially when we're going to post a lot more uh, behind the scenes stuff for upcoming stuff because we're trying to promote it and all that stuff. So Cool. There you go. Excellent. Gentlemen, I have an absolute blast. Well done. Thank you very much. Um, I have to say, um, I absolutely love the book. I do. Thank you. I do. I had no idea what I was going to be getting into when I picked it up, because um, obviously you never judge a book by its cover. Um, and <laughs> I think ours are <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, So then, so started reading it, and as I say, three pages, like that, that third panel on the second page, where the clan just look at each other and like, He's an idiot. I was like, oh my God. I was just thinking how much fun Highlander the movie would have been if that was the scene. Yeah, but, <laughs> you know, so I, I get it. It's, it's fun. It is a serious issue. It is done very, very well. You know, thank you. Um, I love Todd. I think he's class. And, you know, just the sort of, his sort of um, idea of who he is versus his reality of life. <laughs> just kind of, you know, when he rescues the girl from the, from the, uh, from the muggers. And just he has this idea is like you think you could take on all three he's like yeah it's just crazy it's good fun good fun so well done to you both for that thank you thank cool you. excellent don't forget to check out the ucpn for all your favorite shows including if you like marvel it's the no price podcast if you like dc it's the definitive crusade and if you like your comics a little bit older don't forget to check out the old timers comic book show where the hosts aren't old, but the comics most certainly are. Christmas specials are just around the corner. There you go. Eric, Scott, I've had an absolute blast. Thank you so much for spending the time with me. I really do appreciate it. Hey, I Thank appreciate you. you. Thank you very much for having us on. You are more than welcome. Good luck with the book. It'll do fantastic, I am sure. Thank you. We hope. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's it for this week. I've been joining the machine use. And as always, adios. Thank you. <laughs> Visit undercovercapes.com for the latest and greatest podcasts via the Undercover Capes Podcast Network. Also visit our parent company website, comiccrusaders.com, all about comic pop culture. <laughs>